History, language, culture, mentality. Experts, activists and concerned citizens' opinions on what it means to be a Belarusian. Identity. Welcome back. Arseny Anderson is at the mic for you. The 26th Listapod Film Festival is over now. 155 films from 50 countries were shown, and at the national contest, which was being held for the sixth time, two dozen films were shown. At the press conference on the eve of the festival, a small discussion took place, which we broadcasted in the October 23rd issue. Now we have the opportunity to direct the questions of interest about the national contest, the festival as a whole, and the film in particular, to the German director Lothar Herzog, whose film 1986 was shown at the festival. Identity. About your movie in 1986, I was just wondering about the title. I was thinking whether that was sort of a big metaphor for, uh, you know, showing a country that nothing, little has changed since 1986. And you know, uh, have you? watched a Chernobyl show. Yeah. I just had sort of a deja vu when I was watching your film because the sets and in some instances even clothes of people, they were, you know, so, sort of reminiscent of that uh, 1986, mm -hmm. that period. So was that in some sense a metaphor for this not changing place? In a way, I would say yes, because I feel a bit like, um, you know, when a, when a child has a trauma, then a part of his mind stays at that age when the trauma occurred. And um, so I felt like, yeah, it could be that also with 1986, as it was maybe a trauma for the people who experienced it, maybe something stayed at that time. And also I think time is a very important topic for the movie because there is also the scene where the friend of the father, Andre, shows Yelena the trees and the circles of the trees and how the the wood the color of the wood changes after 1986 so how they're also in the tree like the time is kind of um literally seen yeah yeah crystallized and also what i think is very interesting but this is not only in belarus the case i think but also in other countries that there are different times in the same place like for example um if you go to the village you have those sets that you describe that look like 1986 or even older maybe, I don't know, but that doesn't really look like nowadays, right? But it's still nowadays. But then you go to, to the city center of Minsk and you feel like you're maybe in the future or something. So I thought that's also very interesting that the time changes depending where you are. And she was traveling between the city and the, and the rural places. Right, right. I deliberately chose this open ending in a way so for me it could be that she's disappearing in the forest that the forest is eating her up or something or she's just vanishing there or but it could as well be that she just leaves everything behind her and starting something new yeah so i kind of left this to the fantasies of the spectator open for interpretation. Right, yeah. And about your film as a whole, uh, there was a discussion at the press conference when they were announcing all the movies for the national contest, and uh, your movie was the one that uh, raised a few eyebrows, because uh, some of the journalists were asking for the criteria of the national film. And when I was watching the movie, uh, obviously it's about Belarus, uh, perhaps uh, taking place in Belarus, because he said it's not like really about Belarus, not documentary. But still, what do you think would the criteria be for a national film to be you know, considered national? And why would it be different? Where is the borderline? I think it's very difficult to, to draw this border. And actually, I'm in a way, I'm happy also that this discussion took place because I had a similar discussion in Germany also when I was trying to finance the film. And the financing institutions in Germany um, weren't couldn't do anything about the film. In the end, we just got the money from television because the state funding said we cannot finance a film that is set in Belarus, only in Russian language. Even if there is a German director, it's not German enough 
life for us. And so in a way, I'm, I like it that here it's not Belarusian enough and in Germany it's not German enough. So I think those borders are in a way maybe less and less important. And also I think that cinema is really this universal language where it doesn't really matter if it's a good film. It doesn't matter like who's the director, what passport does he have or something like that. It's just about the movie and if it's good it's got to be understood anywhere. I agree with you but then what would be the purpose of you know the national contest if those borders are not really, if they're merging? I think, I cannot say, probably this Nikolai can answer this question better because I didn't choose to show it there, right? Oh, because oh, <laughs> we, we actually understood that uh, you applied to the National Contest yourself. From no, no. Oh, okay. I just applied, I mean, my film school just applied for Listapad. Oh. And Listapad chose to show it in this contest. Identity also, the coordinator of the national competition, Nikolai Lavrenyuk, gave his comment. He talked about what's happening today with Belarusian cinema, how it is developing and why it is important to preserve it. Identity. Nikolai, tell us about your impressions of the festival. I think the festival was held at a high level. We are pleased with the quantity and quality of films that were at the festival, with participants, guests, jury members and viewers. Most shows had full rooms. I'm especially pleased that Belarusian cinema is so popular and in demand that it causes discussion and is not perceived as something foreign, not worthy of attention. During these six years of the existence of the national contest, we see that this is the right initiative. It is an important platform for Belarusian cinema. The quality is growing and Belarusian directors can compete in the international arena. There was a discussion about Lothar Herzog film 1986. Why was it even included in the contest? It was the director's decision and to some extent it can be considered an experiment. I think that for those who saw this film, the answer became obvious, because this is a Belarusian cinema in spirit. This is a movie in which there is no falsehood, which we often see in the works of foreign directors filming about Belarus. They have a large number of stereotypes. Here we see a complete immersion in the Belarusian reality and the Belarusian mentality. The director has known Belarus for a long time and has lived here for more than a year. Most of the crew were from Belarus. And other participants in the national contest were Belarusians, for example Nikita Lavretsky or Kirill Galitsky, who ultimately won. I understand that this causes disagreement in conflict situations, but in our opinion this film isn't foreign. The jury delivered its verdict, a different picture received the prize, but we believe that it was important to show this film. I don't think that there will be many such films in the future, but this is exactly the case when a truly Belarusian movie turned out, even though shot by a German director. How then would you define the mission of the national contest? It is support of Belarusian cinema. This is an opportunity for Belarusian cinema to enter the world stage. The festival is international and it is visited by many foreign professionals. Many of them follow the program of the national contest and get acquainted with the directors. We keep in touch with them and we recommend films for other festivals. This is a good platform for Belarusian viewers to see the panorama of the best Belarusian cinema for the past year and a half. On the other hand, it is a bridge between Belarusian and foreign filmmakers. Unfortunately, Belarusian cinema is not so widely represented on our screens. It is rare indeed. Therefore, for many directors, our festival is an opportunity to show the film to the viewer for the first time and get feedback from them, from critics and colleagues, as well as established contacts. А как вы думаете, что можно сделать, кроме того, чтобы показывать эти фильмы на фестивале? What other platforms are there for promoting Belarusian films? 
Ну, к сожалению, у них не так много этих площадок. There are not many of them. As a rule, authors, directors, and producers, of whom we have few, do this on their own. They themselves promote their pictures at foreign festivals. We do not yet have such a center that exists in most European countries, which is purposefully engaged in the promotion of Belarusian cinema. So, each is left to his own devices. We do not have pavilions at the largest film markets like Cannes or Berlin. We remain enthusiasts, forced to do it ourselves not even with the help of someone, but often in spite of the situation. I would like Belarusian cinema to be more represented at the Belarusian box office. Some films come out, but these are single jobs. From what was in the program of the national contest this year, Alexei Polyan's Lake of Joy and Vlad Sinyakov's Two will be released in theaters. By the way, the latter received a prize at the Warsaw Film Festival. It is planned to also release Pure Art by Maxim Shved. This is an excellent work, which was awarded a diploma of Belarusian film critics. That's it for now. But the Art Corporation Center, which is the directorate of the film festival, also plans to release a few more films down the line. 1986 by Lothar Herzog is one of them. Most importantly, there is the interest of the viewer. Belarusian cinema has its own audience. People are starting to understand that this is not the cinema about which stereotypes have developed, but that it is a lively, modern, relevant cinema. This center you're talking about, should it be a state, private or public initiative? If we study the experience of other countries in the promotion of cinematography, we will understand that without state support, little is possible. In a country where there is a small cinema market, where a foreign product dominates, American and Russian in our case, the creation of such a center will be unprofitable from the business and commerce point of view. Point of view. On the contrary, the center will entail much investment. Therefore, the role of the state is very important, and it's important for the Belarusian culture and the Belarusian nation, for our country. This is the task of the state. How well it is being implemented is a matter of discussion. So you think that Belarusian cinema is one of the areas that can reflect Belarusian identity? Sure, it is part of the Belarusian culture. It is important for the country and state to function so that we recognize ourselves as Belarusians and see ourselves on the screen, see our problems, the problems of others. We are a nation and we must preserve our culture. What does it mean for you to be Belarusian? A difficult and a bit unexpected question. The answer will be rather at the level of feeling. Being a Belarusian means understanding that you are a Belarusian and no one else that this is your country, your culture, and it wasn't born yesterday and not even 25 years ago. It has existed for centuries, whatever form statehood took at that time. This is respect and understanding of Belarusian culture and art. This is the Belarusian language, despite the fact that we do not use it so often. This is love for your country. Identity we talked with Lothar Herzog and Nikolai Lavrenyuk about national cinema. In the next issue, we will return to the topic of art, but through music, with the singer and leader of the Stary Olsa band, Zmitir Sosnowski. You can listen to the program at any time on the YouTube channel Cultural Panorama of Radio Belarus in the Identity playlist. Arseny Anderson was with you. See you in a week. Identity